So in this video then I want to uh, show you how to build a simple Wilkinson splitter. This is a uh, two port splitter and uh, what it will enable you to do if say on your uh, FPV setup your receiver only has uh, one input for one antenna you can have this in line and uh, connect it to your receiver and then you can use the two ports here to actually connect to antennas and uh, it's a lot better way of actually doing it than just say soldering two pieces of coax together um, it's a lot more efficient to actually use one of these and uh, they are actually quite simple and I'm including this PDF for you to actually download it has the uh, schematic there and also the part list and uh, the artwork as well if you want to have a go at etching your own although it's such a simple design it works uh, in either mirror image if you see my uh, one that I've etched out here it's the mirror image of uh, this one but uh, it, it works either way whichever way you flip it and it's also so simple that uh, you don't even have to go and buy photo resist PCB or anything like that you can actually draw this with a uh, permanent marker directly onto some uh, copper clad PCB and etch it out that way so let's jump straight into the video then I'll go through the parts that you actually need to make this and uh, this one is just for 2.4 gigahertz and uh, also the finished one here that has uh, shielding around it underneath the uh, heat shrink tube in there now here on the far left I've got uh, a strip of surface mount resistors now these are actually uh, 47 ohm resistors and we need a 50 ohm resistor but these have a uh, tolerance of plus or minus 5 so they should be fine now here I've got three capacitors I don't have any uh, surface mount capacitors here in the lab at the moment but uh, we need two capacitors that are 9 pf and uh, one capacitor that's 18 pf now here I've got two inductors that are 33 NH and they are rated to three and a half gigahertz so it's going to be fine for this Wilkinson splitter because I'm going to be using it with uh, a 2.4 gigahertz antenna but that's uh, really something you need to keep an eye on if you want to use something uh, build a splitter for say 5.8 gigahertz I would really look for inductors that can go up to about 6.5 gigahertz just to be on the safe side but uh, you want to make sure that uh, the actual rating of uh, the inductor itself is suitable to work at the frequency you're going to use it at now here I've got three SME connectors the type that actually uh, fit uh, PCB boards they actually slip in between the board itself but uh, this is optional you could actually just solder your coax directly to the uh, PCB board so first thing I'm going to do with a PCB board then is flow solder on all the copper tracks here to prepare it to actually solder all the components in place so here's the board all prepared then so I'm going to start soldering the components on first now there's no actual set rules on which components you should actually solder on first but because I haven't got any surface mount capacitors I'm going to solder the two inductors on first because when I solder the capacitors in place I won't be able to or it will be a little bit more tricky for me to get in with the soldering iron to solder on the inductors so I'm going to solder the inductors on first so I'm going to try and uh, show you the soldering with the uh, camera running now it's really really difficult to actually solder with a camera in place because no matter where you put the camera it uh, gets in the way so if my hands a little bit shaky you'll just have to forgive me but soldering surface mount components with a soldering iron is uh, not difficult at all so I've got my uh, inductor here with a pair of uh, tweezers the kind that are spring loaded so they uh, close shut without any kind of pressure so it holds it nice and strong but uh, I'm going to put the conductor in place where I actually want it soldering on that track and I'm going to come in with my soldering iron I've got a little bit of solder on the end of the iron already and I'm going to come in and do a kind of sweeping motion up so you get a uh, form of uh, solder on the end here which actually goes upwards so here's a close-up then and you can see the solder on that uh, first end of the inductor there it's kind of swept up 
and made a kind of a uh, wedge shape holding that uh, inductor in place so what I can do now is come in on the opposite side with the soldering iron I don't need the tweezers anymore and do the same on the opposite side so that's both ends of the inductor soldered and you can see that solder piled up at both ends holding the inductor in place so it's not going to go anywhere so what I'm going to do now is just solder this second inductor in place so now it's time for the resistor and uh, the same method just drag your solder up against the side wall of the resistor and then do exactly the same on the opposite side So with the capacitors then what I did I tinned up the legs on them and then I cut them all the way back quite short as you can see here. What I'm going to do is solder them directly onto the trace themselves. So it's the uh, 18 PF first, a little bit of heat on that leg and that trace, solder in place fine. And finally the final two capacitors using the same method as the previous one and uh, one other thing to note is if you're using tweezers like this try to uh, refrain from actually grabbing it on the uh, body of the capacitor itself because they are quite fragile. And finally I'm going to solder the uh, SMA connectors in place. These ones are really easy. They just slip in in between the PCB board there and then you can get in with your soldering iron and solder the two ground pins directly to ground and the signal pin onto the uh, signal trace there. And again if you don't want to use these you can actually solder your coax directly onto the board itself. So ideally next we want to add some kind of uh, shielding to this. Now um, an aluminium project box or something like that is not going to be really practical because this is going to be velcroed to the uh, back of an antenna. So what I'm going to do first is insulate everything with some uh, heat shrink tubing. Now what I've actually found is if you do this first of all you want to cut two really thin pieces of heat shrink tubing because we want those to go over here and the reason we want to do that is because we don't want that center signal pin exposed if uh, I just put this uh, bigger piece of heat shrink tubing over the top it actually shrinks and it starts to bow inwards here exposing the uh, signal pin so a thin piece first and then uh, a wider piece over the top and that'll make sure you're not exposing your signal pins and then risking shorting out when we put some copper tape around this so now that we've got everything insulated what I'm going to do is wrap it in some of this uh, copper tape now I did a uh, video uh, a few months ago where I looked at some uh, ideas for adding shields to uh, your prototypes etc. Now a few people did say that uh, because this method was not grounded then uh, it wouldn't work properly and uh, somebody even said that uh, it would turn it into an antenna. Now it wouldn't turn it into an antenna not um, at this kind of uh, power output it, it just would not do that and yes if you can actually ground your shield it is a lot better than having it ungrounded but uh, the method I showed you in that video was just something quick and dirty to uh, get a project up and running because it wasn't uh, performing correctly because all those little cheap Bluetooth uh, transmitters there were in close proximity to each other and the interference they were giving off was actually uh, you know um, crippling each one of them and uh, just by doing that adding uh, some shielding to the outside of it like I did it actually made them work and uh, you know when it's in close proximity like that that's uh, fine but uh, I'm going to do a, a similar method here but because I've got these SMA uh, connectors here on the PCB we can actually ground them to these now we don't actually have to ground to each single one just uh, one of these making contact with the copper tape will be fine and uh, that will be grounded then but uh, you can also get some uh, tin and uh, make yourself a shield enclosure to go all the way around this it's just that uh, I can't find a small aluminium project box on eBay and also the amount of weight that that would add to the antenna itself it wouldn't make it really practical 
So as you can see the copper tape is all around there and I've even uh, cut uh, little uh, thin lengths and fed it in between the uh, SMA connectors just to make sure that we've got no gaps in there so it's well shielded now it uh, is making contact with the ground on the SMA connectors because I've checked it with uh, continuity on the multimeter so there's no need to actually go in there and solder anything it's definitely making a good contact but uh, you could leave it like this but I'm going to put some more heat shrink tubing around it just so it uh, lasts quite a lot longer because uh, you know it's only sticky back uh, copper tape this so it would come start to peel away eventually so you want something on there to actually protect it so here's the uh, finished Wilkinson splitter then with a the heat shrink tubing over the top and uh, you can put a little bit of velcro on the back so you can uh, actually attach it to different things and because it's not a big aluminium case it's quite light as well and as I said in the video you don't need to use SMA connectors you can actually come in with your coax and solder it directly to the PCB board the uh, only problem with doing that is of course you can only use it for that one application because it's soldered in place and uh, adding SMA connectors means you can disconnect it and actually add it to something else but even in saying that when you buy all the parts to actually make these um, it's it's just a few few pounds to actually make one of them it's not expensive at all uh, you know capacitors and resistors off eBay are you know pennies and uh, the most expensive parts are the inductors because you must make sure that you get a uh, inductor that works at the frequency that you're actually building the splitter for so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, it was just a quick little video because uh, in a future um, video coming up probably next week I am uh, building an antenna that uh, you do really need to use one of these to actually connect to it so that will be coming up next week. So again if you uh, did enjoy it then please give it a thumbs up, any questions drop them below. I'll put the PDFs and everything else in the description and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.